Happy Friday, Sooner Nation. Welcome back to the Sooner Surge for another Senior Softball Spotlight video. Before we get started, a couple of things. First, thanks for being subscribed to our channel for you guys that are. Uh, if you are not subscribed, hit the subscribe button, click the bell, turn on those notifications so you will be contacted and notified anytime we are posting content. Also, like and comment on the videos. We appreciate that. It really helps us out. Also, check out FanStop, fanstop.com. If you're a softball fan, you need to get on board and order the officially licensed uh, national championship softball shirts. They have a gray. They have a red. Four Pete shirts, officially licensed, fanstop.com. You can see all those links in the description. As you can see, we are here to spotlight uh, senior Alina Torres. Uh, Hunter, uh, Alina Torres came to OU. Uh, she was Her hometown is Glendale, Arizona. Uh, she came to OU after spending three years there uh, around her hometown. And for OU to land her back in 2023, we knew it was a big deal. Uh, I think one thing that really stands out for me for Alina Torres, and we can talk about stats here in a second, but I'm just going to say that if you go back to her time uh, at Arizona State, she actually started all games but one in those, in those seasons. Think about that. So she's leaving a place where she played every game, started almost all, uh, played shortstop her freshman year, all, all this, these things. And she comes to a team where she doesn't know for sure where she's going to play, how much she's going to play. If that doesn't tell you how much uh, she wanted to be a part of this program here at OU and have a chance to win a national championship, not just have a chance to be on a team that uh, won a national championship for the two years she was here, but also play a significant role, which I know she did. Uh, I think, just kudos to Alina Torres for making that move. Yeah, the ultimate utility player coming to OU, playing predominantly outfield in 2023, and then senior year playing second base for Oklahoma for most of the season, starting and really excelling for a good chunk of the season. Had some low moments, but had that streak where it seemed like she was the best player on the team, which – it is not easy to say. There's so many talented players on the team, but there was about a two- to three-week stretch where she was hitting the ball better than anybody. It seemed like any time she was coming up to the plate, runs were going to score. But you mentioned it. One of the many transfers from Arizona State. seems that that's the place Oklahoma has had the most success out of the portal and landing transfers. She came alongside Sydney Sanders uh, two years ago from Arizona State. And since then, won two national championships while at Arizona State. Other than the COVID year, hit a double-digit home runs in each of the three seasons. COVID year, she had nine before the season was shut down. 29 games in, was going to possibly even get to a 20 mark that season with how she was hitting the ball with a, a very high batting average at 395. But a very talented hitter at the plate that really was, like, like you mentioned, a, a willing to play anywhere, anywhere she could get on the field, anywhere she could help her team win, whether that be in the outfield or as a designated hitter or playing even second base. Uh, she did whatever it took to help her team win. Yeah, hit mid-300s uh, at her stint here at Oklahoma. And uh, I know we had Alina Torres on for an interview last year, and one of the things she really talked about improving on or getting back to is something you just mentioned, which was her power. Uh, hit nine bombs, I believe, in 2024, uh, way up from the previous year, where she, uh, she only had one, I believe, uh, the 2023 year. Uh, so she definitely improved in that area. And you're right, Hunter. She had that stint wh where she was amazing. And, and listen, going into the season, a lot of Sooner fans, th the big question was, who's going to roll over to shortstop? Who's going to make the move to shortstop? Tiari Jennings was a possibility. She made that move. And then it was, Really, who was going to play second? Everyone knew Avery Hodge could play second. People knew Torres was a utility player. But I don't think anyone, me included maybe, expected her to be that good defensively. Uh, you talked a little bit about a, a slump that she went through. And that slump was at the plate. Her fielding throughout the season really was, was phenomenal. Uh, she made some great plays leading up to the Women's College World Series. Big-time plays at second base that really never got talked a whole lot about. So 
I think for me, looking at that, I'm going to say, yeah, w- what an improvement, or at least maybe uh, better than we thought, better than advertised at second base. Yeah, freshman year at Arizona State, she actually played shortstop, but that that was kind of the question of year before she's playing outfield, who is going to fill in at second base? There was kind of conversations of maybe it's a platoon type deal. Is it going to be a game where you're kind of focusing on at the plate, Alina Torres gives you a better chance, and then you're sacrificing some sort of defense if it, if you're not putting Avery Hodge out there. But Alina Torres last year for a vast majority of the season, I think she was the best defensive second baseman on the team. She was making some very impressive plays to the point that I thought she should really finish out games. There was times that Oklahoma would get a lead. They pull her to kind of go a little bit more of a defensive lineup in the middle infield, which I I thought I was really impressed with what she was able to do, the plays she was able to make. There was a lot of very impressive stops, quick get up, throw, either over to second for to TRA to try to turn two, get the lead runner, or even getting it to first. So I, I think she had a very good year in the field in 2024. Yeah, and uh, it, it was great to see her get in that game after getting hit uh, with the ball to be able to get in the last game of the year, and then she gets hit by the pitch, uh, scored a run. Uh, but, you know, she what I love about Alina Torres is she's so competitive. She was angry. Uh, it was visible that she was upset she got hit by that pitch, not because of the pain. It's because she wanted to swing the bat uh, one last time. I love that about Alina Torres. And the other thing that really stands out to me about Alina Torres is after the Women's College World Series, even when she was sitting some, uh, she was on, on Twitter, she was really highlighting the plays of her teammates. She was talking about Avery Hodge. She was talking about other players and what they meant to this program. To me, phenomenal leadership by Alina Torres. Cannot be talked about enough. Yeah, uh, that's. I think that could be said about every senior in this class. Oklahoma it is losing a lot of senior leadership. Ten seniors, all of them really unique paths. I mean, you had the core five. You also had the transfers. But all of them had very exceptional leadership qualities, as you mentioned with Torres there. Finishing her career with a 342 average at Oklahoma, 549 slugging, 408 on base percentage, seven or 10 home runs, 17 doubles with 56 RBIs, and 27 walks. So, and also back to the defensive side, one error in two years at Oklahoma, a career fielding percentage of 994. So, one error in two seasons at Oklahoma. Very impressive in the field. Phenomenal uh, senior spotlight highlighting uh, Alina Torres. Uh, kudos to Alina Torres for what she meant to this program. Uh, Thanks for watching. Also, if you want to still watch Alina Torres, Oklahoma City Spark, uh, she's there. Uh, Appreciate you guys watching this video. Check out FanStop, fanstop.com. We'll see you next time.